Sure. In Dallas, Texas. How's it going, guys? Hey, Dallas. Hey, Josh. Hey, man. I love y'all's show. Thanks so much. Yeah, I am a theist, though. I, I just like, I'm very open minded, so I like looking at both sides. Okay. Okay. And my question to y'all would be over the cosmological argument. Okay. I'm pretty sure y'all are very familiar with it as far as the premises go. I can restate them. Well, it depends on which version. Yeah, there's... Okay. Um, cosmological okay. is a category of arguments, and then there are specific arguments that fit within that category. The most it typical the is the Kalam, which William yeah, Lane Craig uses. Sure. Yeah, that's the one I'm, uh, that's the one I'm uh, wanting to talk about, is the Kalam cosmological argument. Sure. First premise so, uh, is everything that begins to exist has a cause for its existence. Exactly. Everything that had a beginning had a cause. Okay, it's slightly different wording, but everything that begins to exist has a cause for its existence. So, have you got it sitting in front of you? I have uh, the premises in front of me. You don't have the conclusion? Oh, yeah, I have uh, one, two, and three. Number two is that the universe had a beginning, and then the conclusion would be, therefore, the universe had a cause. Cool. Therefore, the universe has a cause is the conclusion of the Kalam cosmological argument. From the Kalam cosmological argument, what do we know about the cause? So I first want to start with premise one, and then it we'll doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We can go right to the conclusion. The conclusion of the Kalam cosmological argument is therefore the universe had a cause for its existence. You pre the argument is presented. It has premises. Everything that begins to exist has a cause for its existence. The universe began to exist. Therefore, the universe has a cause for its existence. Yes, that, that argument uh, does not include the word God at all. No, but... So it's not an argument for the existence of God, then, is it? No, it can be. It is. It it's, is it, no, it cannot be. It yeah. cannot be and isn't. You can't have an argument for something that does not contain the thing you're arguing in any premise or the conclusion. Matt, Matt, with the science that we have today, either something created the universe or nothing created the universe. Okay, but now you're not talking about the Kalam cosmological argument. You asked what I thought you asked what I thought of the Kalam cosmological argument and I'm telling you, it's not an argument for the existence of God. Its conclusion is that therefore the universe has a cause. So, premise 2 says that the universe had a beginning. Would you say I, that's correct? I So, first of all, I reject premise 1 and possibly pr premise 2, and I'd highly recommend that you watch the debate between Sean Carroll and William Lane Craig, where Sean exposes the problems, or you can look at Theoretical Bullshit's YouTube video where he goes through this. But here's the thing. Most modern physicists are rejecting the premises of this argument. But it doesn't matter because I, concede, I can concede all of it, and we get to the conclusion, therefore the universe had a cause for its existence. That argument tells us nothing about the nature of the cause, whether it's an agent, whether it's an entity, uh, nothing at all. You have to add something to the Kalam to get to a god. So I've given you that my thought. What? That would be um, as far as later. So my, my argument is It's that a different... It's, it's, there's, a po there's a possibility... Josh. Uh, either way, either something... Josh, Josh. Are we going to talk about the Kalam cosmological argument or are we going to talk about something else? The, the Kalam cosmological argument. Okay. The conclusion of the Kalam is what? Therefore, the universe had a cause. Okay. Does that tell us anything at all about God? Yes, something. No, it doesn't. No. How can it tell us anything about God when there's nothing in there, nothing in the argument about God? You are inferring something and adding something to the argument. If I say all men are mortal, Socrates is a man, therefore Socrates is mortal, and you say that this is proof that pixies are what makes Socrates mortal, you are adding something to it. The Kalam cosmological well, argument is not an argument for the existence of God. It is an argument that the universe had a cause for its existence. It is potentially incorrect, and you can talk to phys physicists about this. It is also dishonest in the sense that the original version of the cosmological argument had as its first premise, everything has a cause. And then when they said, hey, what about God? Then they make this post hoc rationalization that God didn't have a beginning. But it may be the case that we're playing games with words here that our local presentation of the universe, the local space-time, had a beginning that we identify with the Big Bang, which may not even be correct, but that is the current best scientific model, and that there, it may not make sense to talk about anything prior to the Big Bang if time came into being with the Big Bang. And so you have this situation 
where our local presentation of space-time had what appears to be a beginning, but that doesn't tell you anything at all about whether the cosmos in which the universe exists had a beginning. It may, it may or may not be eternal. This is something you can't investigate. But while all of that is interesting in speculation, the Kalam cosmological argument is not and cannot be an argument for the existence of God until you add something else. Right, so I'm saying that space, time, and matter had a beginning. Would you agree with that? Local space, time, and matter apparently has a beginning, but we cannot confirm that because we cannot go back and investigate prior to the Planck time. No, uh, uh, yes, yes, that's true. But as far as the evidence that we do have today, Stephen Hawking, Einstein, everybody is saying that the universe had a beginning from nothing. Actually, actually, uh, these things are changing, and when they say the universe had a beginning or the universe sprang from nothing, these are physics models that are talking about the local presentation of space-time in our universe. They are not a claim about the cosmos or whether there's a multiverse that is producing infinite universes or anything like that. So if all you can talk about is the universe that we inhabit, because that's what we can explore, and when we speculate on what happened outside of the universe, we don't have any grounds for that. But none of this has anything to do with whether or not the Kalam demonstrates that a god exists. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Okay, thanks. Thanks. If you want to actually call in with an argument for the existence of God, first thing you should understand is how to make an argument. And the yeah. Kalam cosmological argument is valid. I think it's unsound. You should know the difference between validity and soundness. It is valid in structure. But the problem is, if you have an argument that has major and minor premises, and at no point in that argument is God one of them, it's not an argument for the existence of God. It's not an argument yeah. that relates to God at all. If the conclusion is, therefore, the universe had a cause, the next question becomes, okay, what could be the cause for that universe? Those are the next questions, assuming we agreed with that, which we don't necessarily. And that's where you start having an argument for why you think there is a God, and then you can have an argument for why you think that God should be considered as the cause that the Kalam points to. Right, and yeah, and it's like... I, I guess uh, somebody had, had asked at one point, do you think an argument can be used as evidence for a God? And, and I said, well, I, I can't think of a single argument I've heard that could be used as, as like evidence for a God. It's an argument is an argument. This it's is a, the critique, Kant's critique of pure reason and, wh and whether or not you could have an epistemologically sound. I think that you could construct an argument provided that the premise is tied to something right. empirical. Yeah. And, but, you know, like you said, assuming we accept the Kalam uh, cosmological argument as valid and sound, which there's questions about that, um, you're right, we get to the point where we have to start talking about what is this cause. And if you're asserting that, okay, it's this thing you're calling a god, you still have to have evidence um, that says, first of all, that this, this cause that you're positing exists. Um, you know, in the form that you're describing. And if you want to say it's a god, okay, what are the characteristics of this god? The argument tells us nothing about that. The, the other, the, you, could, and, you could reformat the argument. You could change. You could, so yes. here's, how, here's one way that you can try to assess an argument to see what it is or isn't telling you. Let's redo this with the, com, the Kalam. Premise one, every existing human being had parents. Premise two, Matt is an existing human being. Conclusion, Matt had parents. Yes. Now that's valid, and I would argue it's actually sound. Yes. If you present that as an argument for why Mark is my dad, you're wrong. Exactly. Mark's not included in that argument. You're actually factually wrong. So what you're saying the cause is, or what you're, who you're saying my parents are, is a completely separate issue. This is why the Kalam, th this is the tap dance that William Lane Craig does, by the way. Because he'll present the Kalam, and then he will say, let's talk about the kind of thing that could be the cause of the universe. Mm -hmm. Assuming you select, accept the Kalam, which seems reasonable to people who aren't you know, cosmologists and right. don't have objections to certain things. Let's talk about things that So he has additional arguments that he uses after the fact, basically saying, hey, the universe had to have cause. What kind of cause could it be? Boom, 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 boom. This gets us to God. And then he has additional arguments that gets him to Jesus. 
go back through some of Bill's debates and see how many times those extra arguments are actually presented rather than just, hey, we have extra arguments that get us to the God specifically, but this debate is just about whether or not there is a God, and so I'm just going to focus on this. Um, you, you didn't even need, need the Kalam at all to do that. You could have walked in and said, hey, we need some explanation for why things are the way they are. Let's have that discussion and why I think it's God. He doesn't do that. Yeah. But, you know, what do I know? <laughs> I don't have a terminal degree in the relevant fields, which is why Bill Craig won't debate me. Which is, yeah. And I would recommend, as I did with uh, Richard Dawkins when we were in Vancouver, that all of our friends who are godless heathens, who have terminal degrees, uh, PhDs or whatever, in relevant scientific fields, if Craig wants to debate you on something that's in your field, you should just decline using his own criteria, noting that he doesn't have a terminal degree in physics. Or biology or anything. Yeah. What on earth makes him theology. think that he should be on a, on a playing field with yeah. one of the world's preeminent biologists to argue about biology when he won't debate people? It's, it's, it's pretentious silliness. Yeah. But that's enough of the Craig Rand. By the way, I like your analogy. With Thank the parents. I, yeah. It just, it came to me as if it was a it's coincidental great. gift from a god. There must be a god. Must be a god because I can't come up with this stuff without help from, you know, a divine being.